Good day, everybody. Okay, this is a uh, little circuit we're looking at tonight. Um, it is basically the solid state Padini SSG circuit uh, without our base resistor and pot, um, but the rest is basically the same. We have what we would call our run battery or battery A, and our charge battery, battery B. Our diode in this case that comes off the collector is an LED. Um, that will show us when this battery is being charged. And for this little experiment, we're using a secondary out of a microwave oven um, transformer that we have split in half. And what I mean by that is I picked out one of the windings, what would be about the uh, center of the windings. Um, or the centre of the length of wire and I've done that by measuring halfway across and then going up three more turns because the outside is a bigger diameter would have more wire and we uh, are within um, 5 ohms so we we're pretty close considering this coil is about 180 ohms across so we've got about um, 87 and 93 on each half so pretty close um, the 87, the lower one I'm using for the uh, drive coil or run coil and uh, the one that's higher in resistance I'm using for our trigger coil. This one here, um, you'll see this extra little circuit that's coming off of the base going through a third battery through an LED back to the emitter see why and how we've been able to do this when we look at the circuit running. Okay, the scope first. Um, the blue channel on my scope, channel 2, is across the collector emitter, uh, emitter base junction and channel A, a yellow channel, is across collector emitter. And here you can see our secondary little circuit where we're coming off of the base down into the positive side of our third battery, out of the negative side through our little LED um, in this direction because this potential even though it's the negative side of the battery will be the positive potential as far as the LED is concerned and our emitter remains the negative potential. Alright so um, our three meters here, I will just turn them back on this one here is showing us the voltage across our run battery. This one here is showing us the voltage across our charge battery. That is very dead, as is this one, but I'd like to bring them back to life. So um, 700 milliamp hour rechargeables are good to have. Um, and so we're going to pulse charge them, see if we can bring them back, together, uh, back to life. So uh, that is our third little circuit here. And we can have this circuit because of the high number of turns on our secondary or trigger coil. So to start this, all we have to do is tap emitter collector. One quick little tap. And um, as you can see, it is up and running. That battery is now being charged looks to be fairly healthy still that battery because um, if it was unhealthy it would go right up in voltage very fast that one's going up quite slowly so that is a good sign um, alright so our uh, scope here we'll have a look see what's happening um, like I said the yellow traces cross our primary um, or cross our uh, collector emitter so we can see when there is zero volts on that trace means the transistor is closed. Here the transistor opens and that there spike is what is driving that LED rather brightly and um, charging our second battery. Okay, so the blue trace, which is our base emitter trace or... Um, the trigger coil as it's known um, we can see we don't have a big death spike here so it's been nicknamed the death spike 
Um, if I open the time base up a bit, looks like it's got more of the death rattles. So um, we're getting a ringing. Uh, where are we? Shift that across a bit. We're get a, getting a uh, ringing across the trigger coil when the transistor becomes open. Um, I'm set at 5 volts per division so you can see we have um, the first spike is 15 volts so um, we can actually have a look at that and we've got 14.8 volts peak to peak so 14.8 nearly 15 volts on the first spike um, and then it just rings down until such time as the transistor switches on again so this here energy at the moment um, is being dissipated across our uh, trigger coil. Now it won't be a lot because the um, resistance on our trigger coil is very high but it will be enough to charge the second battery. So what we can do now um, is we can put that second battery in. It's no good showing you the open voltage. As we can see our LEDs are going nice and brightly now um, and the second battery is also charging up so what that has done now now something interesting um, we have a little ring across our um, drive coil run coil um, which is L1 on the schematic you can see we've put that little ring in the middle of um, the magnetic field collapse somehow and uh, so the LED and that battery there will be receiving that little bit of ringing but what you can see now um, across L2 is we have clamped that voltage um, across that coil at what our battery voltage is plus what the LED is uh, using or the uh, voltage drop across the LED and the voltage drop across the battery will be what this is um, and at the moment it's 4.6 volts So it's clamped it off very nicely, and uh, for some reason it switched the uh, ringing over to um, our primary coil, or L1, which is quite common for air core coils. Uh, they tend to ring a lot better than uh, a um, steel core coil, which uh, don't ring very often, but the air coil normally does, at one point or another. So um, that's running very happy at the moment. We're charging both batteries and we are now lighting two LEDs. We're not going to go into uh, power in, power out and all that crap. This is just to show you what we can do with this circuit. So hopefully these two batteries here, um, our two charged batteries, will have um, built up or charged up reasonably well before our run battery drops down to a uh, non-running state. You'll notice since we've hooked this one up we've definitely um, taken some of the energy away from charging this one. But the LED is still going bright, which inst indicates to me that um, there is still enough there left to uh, trickle charge that battery, as is this one. Um, and it is charging up quite fine. Going down for some reason now. I would say because they're starting to take a charge. Um, the internal resistance of the battery is dropping and that is why our voltage is dropping because they're starting to take a deeper charge instead of a surface charge. 
So that's a good thing. We know they are still receiving um, enough current to charge because the LEDs are going. So um, if there wasn't enough um, current flowing through at um, a high enough voltage potential, there is no way those LEDs would be bright or running at all. So that is what's happening. The internal resistance in our two charge batteries is dropping down. Um, allowing the battery to take a uh, deeper, much more solid charge. But as long as those LEDs are lit, we know those two batteries are indeed taking a charge. So that's our little circuit for tonight. Uh, the double charger. Air core Bedini setup. Uh, like I said, circuits don't come much more simpler than this. There is one left that is a little more simpler than this and uh, we're going to do that one next. A very small change. Um, so that's it. No resistors, nothing. We simply um, got our two coils, L2s across base emitter, L1 positive side of the battery, of our run battery, down to the collector and um, of course our simple little secondary circuit that's driven off the base emitter junction. Okay, so um, that's it for this one. Simple, effective, and um, we have two batteries being charged at the moment. This old uh, Watara battery is out of my metal detector. Just a uh, standard El Cheapo bulk buy battery. There wasn't enough left in it to drive the metal detector. But um, it's running this circuit quite well. It would seem 1.48 volts in it. But um, it has recovered somewhat while it's been sitting in my drawer. Alright guys, uh, we'll see you next video. And um, have fun.